So, I'm gonna run down through the basics of what you need to know in Company of Heroes 2. A lot of people seem intimidated by this game when they first see it, but it's built in a logical way so it makes for an easy understanding of the more complex systems once you get to grips with the basics. So, as of January 2016 there are 5 factions in Company of Heroes 2 that all play very differently. The Wehrmacht and the Oberkommando West are part of the Axis, Russia, the US forces and the British forces are part of the Allies. Each faction plays very differently to each other and has strengths and weaknesses that will depend on your playstyle. If you like this video, I'll proceed to cover each faction in depth later. There is of course single player in Company of Heroes 2, but I'm going to focus on the multiplayer aspect, specifically Victory Point Mode. Victory Point Mode is simple, there are X amount of Victory Points located in the map, usually 3, and each team starts with X amount of tickets, usually 500. The flag can be either allied, neutral or enemy, blue, white or red. If there are more allied victory points than enemy points, the enemy tickets will deplete, and vice versa. The more points owned, the faster they will deplete for the other team. Once the tickets are depleted to zero, it's game over. Okay, so let's start a game and look at everything on the hood. I've chosen Soviets to start with as they are the default ally faction. So from left to right we have the radar map. Pressing the numpad zero button by default will full screen this map. This map is key to knowing the ebb and flow of the battle. It shows the movement of all your allies and what you can see of the enemy, when a territory is being captured and when it's being lost. Surrounding that, we have some options and shortcuts. We have the player list, the ping tool which alerts your allies to something going on, idle infantry and vehicle buttons to zoom to a unit not doing anything, and the full screen button. Next over we have the commander points and three commander icons. Commander points go up steadily throughout the game but faster if you're performing well. Points aren't spent but act more like levels instead. When you feel like you want to choose a commander, their abilities will be locked behind a certain number. This is the number associated with your command points. Once you reach commander point 5, you can then use the ability that needs 5 to unlock. Generally speaking, more powerful abilities are locked behind higher command points and saved for late game use. Remember, don't think of it as spending points, think of it as a level required to unlock something. Before going into a game, you can choose commanders. Each commander has a set of 5 abilities that will help you win your fight. You bring 3 into battle and then activate 1. Once activated, you can't swap them out for someone else. This means it's best to wait until you're sure what commander you need to use. Below is the current selected unit or vehicle. The blue bar represents its health, the stars represent its veterancy, and the number represent the kills it has achieved. The gold bar represents the experience the unit has before it attains a new veterancy level. To see what effects having a veteran unit gets you, hover over one of the stars. It's usually different for all units. Some repair faster, take less damage, aim better, and so on. The information panel is in the middle of the screen and will describe the unit selected, vehicle or building. On the right of that, if the entity can be upgraded, you'll see the little upgrade buttons. These can range from new equipment, such as equipping a unit with a flamethrower, to giving them extra spotting distance. Remember, upgrading a unit isn't always a straight benefit. Attaching a flamethrower to a unit will mean that a man loses his weapon. So instead of 4 MGs, you'll have 3 MGs and a flamethrower, meaning you'll need to get close to do more damage. Once you think about it practically, it makes sense. Units are actually carrying weapons, and these weapons have damage values in range. Above the info panel to the right is the resource monitor. Company of Heroes 2 has 3 resources and a population capacity. Manpower, fuel, and munitions are the essentials to the game. Manpower's intake per minute is a high value by default, and lowers over time the higher your population. Manpower is usually needed primarily when recruiting new infantry and vehicles, but can sometimes be needed to build defenses and equipment too. Fuel and munitions are influenced by what territory you own. There are four types of territories. Default capture point, fuel point, munitions point, and victory point. There is also sometimes a repair point and medic point, but they're not that important and not very common, so there's no real point covering them. A default capture point will give you a little bit of munitions and a little bit of fuel. A munitions point only gives munitions, but a large amount. Fuel points give large amounts of fuel only. Victory points don't give resources. Obviously, you want to get as much resources as possible, so taking the points to increase the amount you can build is the aim of the game. Lastly, on the far right is your primary building section. In here, depending on the faction, you'll see what you can recruit and what is needed to unlock the other buildings. Capturing points is pretty simple, just stand a unit in its zone of control and it'll capture. The more units in a point does not affect the speed of the capture. Once captured, the territory is now yours and will produce resources. However, the territory needs to be connected to your base in some way. 
If it's isolated or surrounded by enemy territory, you won't get the benefits of the point or territory. Most defenses, bunkers, MG nests, and placements can only be built in connected home territory, so it's important that you don't get cut off. You can also build resource caches on default capture points. Only certain units can do this depending on the faction, but it will construct a small defense on the point that generates either more fuel or munitions. The benefits of this is having more resources coming in and the cache needs to be destroyed before the enemy can take the point. They aren't hard to destroy with any kind of explosives, but infantry will be sitting there for a long time before they can take it over. Lastly, I'm going to cover some important game mechanics. First off is taking cover. Infantry can be in four states. Exposed, not in cover, in half cover, or in full cover. Infantry generally perform better in cover and take less damage and are harder to hit. Always place your units in cover where possible. Cover is dynamic, both being created and destroyed with the flow of battle. This includes garrisoning buildings. The bigger the building, the harder to kill the troops inside because they're spread out. Likewise, putting a unit in a very small building will make them an easy target for a grenade. This one might sound obvious, but never let a unit completely die. As an example, a unit usually costs around 300 manpower to create. If that unit enters battle with four soldiers and three of them die, sending the unit back to base will allow you to replenish it. Replenishing the unit costs roughly 8% manpower per soldier to regain. So you gain 80% of a unit back for 24% of the cost. Not just that, but the unit retains its experience and veterancy and any upgrades it had. This is the single most important thing in Company Ferris 2 in my opinion, and applies to vehicles, infantry, defences and anything else. If it can be repaired or replenished, it needs to stay alive. Another important game mechanic is suppression and close quarters combat. Knowing your units makes a very big difference. If you have rifles, keep your distance in cover to do optimum damage. If you have submachine guns, get right up in the enemy's face to do maximum damage. A light machine gun is very important. This gun displays an arc of fire that if another unit gets caught in for about 1-2 to two seconds will drop to the floor and become suppressed. Suppressed units don't fire accurately and scatter. If they are suppressed long enough without getting out of the way of the MG, they become pinned. At this point, the unit will not move, nor fire or react to orders. Units cannot capture points while pinned either. The only available option most of the time is to retreat. The retreat button is used to tell the unit to evacuate the area and run all the way back to base or to a retreat point. If a unit is about to get wiped out, hit retreat to potentially save them, heal up and replenish. Whilst retreating, the unit cannot receive any more orders, so you have to wait until they reach their retreat point. There is a basic rock paper scissors to the game as well. Machine guns are usually countered by mortar fire. Mortar fire is usually countered by infantry, and infantry is usually countered by machine guns. On top of that, vehicles are multi-purpose too, with light, heavy, medium and artillery variants. Vehicles are exposed to fire from behind, so best to reverse out of combat for the most part, as it's generally more protection and faster than turning around. Buildings, while great cover, do also take damage. Pull your units out if you see the building is about to collapse, which is visible by the health bar above it or when clicking it. Red smoke indicates artillery or air support strikes, so get out of the area if you see it, and green smoke usually indicates scout planes or support drops. Lastly, line of sight plays a role in Company Pyros 2. If your troops cannot see it, then you can't see it either, unless you have air support also for a brief period, or specific abilities that intercept enemy movements. I think that's about it for my guide to Company of Heroes 2, those are all the mechanics that define the gameplay in COH2, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like this, then like the video and I'll start going through the strengths and weaknesses of the factions in the game. Until then, that's all from me, and I'll see you in the next one.